GPUs are great for transcoding multiple Plex streams at once, but which one should you get? In this video, I'm going to be comparing various GPUs for the purpose of Plex transcoding, taking a look at a few other aspects like drivers and compatibility and different OSs, and just go over my old experience and some recommendations of what might be a better option for your use case. I put together a lot of different data, ran into some issues, and going to run over all of that in this video. Few disclaimers before I get into the actual data. I bought all this hardware for the purpose of making this and other videos, so no external input went into the making of this video. Also, I had some oddities as shown by these red squares of results that just really didn't feel right. I tried multiple installs and trying around all the kind of basic guides and solutions I could see online, but it just wouldn't work. But if you know what the issue are, let me know and I'll go over more detail into the issues I ran into later on. Let's first start by taking a look at the different hardware I'm going to be comparing today. The first GPU I'm taking a look at is this ASRock ARC A380 Low Profile. This is part of Intel's new ARC Alchemist GPUs, which is their first series in dedicated graphics cards, and quite a bit of their branding and marketing was about how these are good at transcoding capabilities. So it'll be interesting to see how this stacks up. I've tried these in multiple systems, and they're effectively plug and play in almost any semi-modern system I've used. While these do work better using the resizable bar support that my system has, I have tried quickly on older systems and there didn't seem to be a significant difference when it came to transcoding performance. I also want to point out that this card is probably pretty well suited to a transcoding system with no external power needed, low profile so it fits into almost any system, and being dual slot really the only limitation for some computers. They do have an A310 that's low profile single slot that might be worth considering, if having the smallest form factor is good. And based off talking to a friend that had a higher end ARC A770, I believe all of these ARC A series cards have the same transcoding core built onto them, but let me know if you know any more details about the differences in their transcoding capability. The next card I'm gonna be taking a look at is this NVIDIA RTX A400. I got this card on NVIDIA's website for about $135 new, and this is a professional series graphics card. It would have been called a Quadro if it came out a few years ago, and uses the professional drivers, has a slightly different cooler with no aftermarket cooler options, has slightly different display outputs compared to a lot of consumer grade cards in the same price bracket, and also comes with this nice small low profile single slot cooler with no external power that should fit in nearly any system. But looking at specs makes the system look a lot less appealing. The core on this is an Ampere generation core or RTX 3000 series with it using the same die, I believe, as the RTX 3050, with only four gigabytes of VRAM on this card on a 64-bit bus. It also has many fewer CUDA cores, with only about 800 CUDA cores on this compared to over 2,200 on the RTX 3050. It's a bit cheaper than any new 3050 I can find for sale right now, and probably has the same transcoding performance, so it might make sense for a transcoding use case, but other than that, these cards don't seem to be that good. But I'm gonna dive into the performance details later on. The next GPU I guess I'm gonna be comparing it is the iGPU on my 12900K. From everything I can see, the iGPU is nearly identical on all of these 12th, 13th, and 14th generation desktop parts, so there should be a pretty good representation of all of these most recent Intel CPUs. Stuff's a little bit different on the laptop side as Intel has put a lot of different generations under the same 12th or whatever number generation it is and their naming scheme can get confusing at times. But this is probably still a reasonable representation of a recent Intel's iGPU transcoding capabilities. The motherboard I'm using this on is a MSI Z690 Force motherboard with the turbo limits unlocked and the CPU essentially being the best case scenario in terms of thermals and what the motherboard is allowing it to do without using manual overclocking. And the last thing I'm going to be using for comparison is just not using any GPU at all and using the 12900 CPU on here. So let's talk about the testing methodology I used for all of these different GPUs. So for all of my testing, I used Plex as my streaming or media handling program to do all my streaming. I know there's others like Jellyfin, but I, my testing got pretty complex quickly, so I decided to simplify it and just leave it with Plex. I also did all of my testing on Windows 11 and Ubuntu 24.04 with some Fedora used because of the issues I ran into. Because of the driver situation is different on those different OS's, I thought it'd be best to just try it on both and get numbers for all of those. Next thing is when it comes to my input media, I used media I created, 
for all of my testing and use separate media for all the streams. So every stream I was running when I had, let's say 22 streams at the same time was a different copy of media. And the media I created was in two different variants. First of all was H.264 4K media at 40 megabit. This is SDR content and just 4K SDR. The next thing I made was 4K 50 megabit HEVC or H.265 HDR content. I'm seeing HDR getting a lot more common in content that you might like rip off of Blu-ray for example. Being able to handle HDR content well requires different processing on these GPUs because I was using an SDR client. So effectively Plex was turning the HDR video into SDR to have the best viewing possible experience for an SDR system and that requires additional processing on your system to do well. And if you're using an older client that can't do HDR, you have to do that conversion and with all this new content on something like a Blu-ray rep, it's probably a good idea to see how your system would handle it if you want to handle lots of streams. And for all of my transcoding tests, I was converting these 4K streams into 1080p 10 megabit streams. I know there's a lot of different workloads and resolutions and situations people work with, but with the number of streams I was actually getting in my tests, this was kind of a decent middle ground of not too many tests to test with, but also a decent amount of precision between the different tests. And I also thought this was a reasonably realistic workload for running all of these. I do want to point out this is kind of a worst case situation, as my guess is a lot of you who do have Plex will have some of your systems using direct streaming, so they won't need to use the transcoding at all, or some of it's going to be 1080p content that's going to need a lot less transcoding capability than converting 4K to 1080p. But with that out of the way, let's get into my numbers and results and start with the most important thing of how many streams it can handle. The super simple summary is that the iGPU is the best, which is better than the ARC A380, which is better than the RTX A400, which is almost on par or maybe a little bit better than the iGPU on this system. But with the quick summary out of the way, let's get into the complex results and all the different issues and oddities I ran into during my testing. The only test that I had that ran without any issues on all my different hardware was the SDR 4K to 1080p on Microsoft Windows 11. Every other test had some sort of issue I ran into. Here's the little bar graph if you want to see the performance of the different systems and how much better the different cards are. But let's dive into the next tests I ran and the issues I ran into them. The first thing was the SDR test on Linux. And in this case, all of the um, graphics cards were a little bit better than on Windows, except for the NVIDIA card, which I couldn't get to do any Plex transcoding at all on Linux. So I tried quite a bit of troubleshooting, including different variants of the proprietary NVIDIA driver. I tried running it on Fedora Linux as well as Ubuntu. I tried doing the install with this card in it, so the system wouldn't have ever seen any other graphics card on this system. But when I was setting up Plex, it would show unknown NVIDIA as the card instead of the exact model name. I tried swapping it out for something like a 1650 and it did show the correct model name. I tried running tests using FFmpeg and my card was working fine, but Plex's own internal transcoder didn't seem to be using it. From everything I could see in Google, there wasn't specific issues. This is a relatively rare new card. So I'm guessing that maybe Plex is working on it. Maybe the NVIDIA driver needs some sort of update but something weirds about this and it just didn't seem to work at all in Ubuntu. Um, other Nvidia cards generally work fine, but I don't have a current gen card that I feel like using for comparison. So if you're having issues on Linux with Plex and Nvidia, try Windows is the only thing I can really think of saying right now. The next issue I ran into was doing tone mapping from HDR to SDR. So by default on Windows, this will all be done on the CPU. So some transcoding and decoding will be done on your GPU, but the majority of the work will be done on the CPU, which effectively limited all these streams to either three or four streams, basically maxing out my CPU and being limited by CPU cycles. With the exception on Windows being this RTX A400, which could do seven streams of HDR using all of its compute power effectively. Meaning that these NVIDIA cards might be the best option if HDR to SDR conversion in hardware is your goal but it still didn't work at all on Linux. And in Intel cards, which should be able to do the HDR to SDR tone mapping on Linux, didn't do that at all for me. The interesting part is they actually showed usage on the cards, but the CPU should still shot up and I could do the same amount of streams as I could on CPU alone. So 
I guess it wasn't helping at all having the GPUs turned on in these use cases. I asked my friend that I worked with this same issue on a little bit earlier and had him switch to Linux because it did support it on hardware to take a look and I couldn't reproduce it, but this was on a NUC using a laptop processor, which is using different generations of encoding than the desktop CPUs, so it's hard to say. But if you're doing lots of HDR to SDR conversions on Plex, it might be worth looking at an NVIDIA card because they do seem to be doing it in hardware without any issues or really any caveats. It's also the only way to do HDR to SDR conversion, I believe currently on Linux, but Plex seems to have added support for the most recent Intel iGPUs, but wow, their, their asterisks and their transcoding capabilities gets weird and annoying at times. I ran a few other tests to try to get some other interesting data on these systems and uh, like the amount of streams I could decode in FFmpeg or just basic 4K to 4K um, re-encoding of videos and I generally didn't seem to be find that as a great representation of how good a GPU would work in Plex, likely because there's some sort of like single threaded or single stream limitations that doing one encode at a time would reach but when you're doing maybe 20 encodes at a time, the systems worked well. I also had some issues when testing of like, what is 20 encodes? I tried running it multiple times. I'm sure my data has a little bit of issues, but in general, it's fairly reproducible the amount of streams I could get. So I'm pretty confident saying these Intel iGPUs are quite a bit better. I also brought up the question to myself of why are these iGPUs better than these other ones? Cause you'd think the iGPU on these systems are almost an afterthought. They're not very fast at all when it comes to 3D performance. I ran 3D Mark on all these chips and none of these are gaming chips, but the A380 wins by a little bit and the iGPU is the worst by far. One theory I had in comes to memory and memory capacity, because the amount of memory the iGPU was reported as using in Task Manager was very high and I believe the tens or 20 plus gigabyte range. And these low end cards have either six or four gigabytes of memory. So maybe they had to go over the PCIe bus or limited some of their capabilities because they just didn't have enough memory for each stream to use. But the iGPU had much more memory, although quite a bit slower memory. Perhaps that was one of the reasons why the iGPUs do so well here. Let me know if you have a GPU like a 3090 that has a lot of VRAM and if that does significantly better just due to its VRAM. I wish there was an easy way to disable VRAM to test that alone, but that's another interesting factor. When it comes to other things you might want to think about when picking a GPU, power consumption is one of these. The iGPU is the best, idling on my system at a bit over 50 watts from the wall. Both of these dedicated graphics cards pulled a little bit more power in both Linux and Windows just sitting idle. The A380 was about 10 watts more than the iGPU. The A400 was about 15 watts more than the iGPU. When it comes to noise from these coolers, under the standard load of just doing Plex transcoding, which typically does not max out the power consumption of GPUs, they were all effectively silent or very quiet, I'd say, for my use. But this um, RTX A400's little fan gets quite noisy under like gaming load, but you probably won't see that in a encoding system, for example. When it comes to the Plex power consumption or the amount of power consumption when doing the maximum amount of Plex streams they could do, about 90 watts from the wall when using the iGPU, 115 with the A380, and 130 from the wall using the RTX A400. And on CPU alone, I was pulling about 320 watts, showing how these 12th and newer generation Intel CPUs can suck up power if you let them. So with all this data, what would I say the best option for your Plex transcoding system would be? The first thing I'd probably have to recommend is these Intel iGPUs on 12th and newer generation Intel CPUs. They had the best performance by far and the lowest power consumption. It's hard to not recommend them for most users. The biggest disadvantage I'd say is it effectively locks you into Intel's 1700 platform to use the system. And while it can be nice for some uses, its memory is limited to 192 gigabytes, for example, with a relatively low amount of PCIe lanes if you wanted a large server. And you're also tied to using these Intel CPUs, which might not have the amount of cores or performance that you want for your workloads. I will mention Supermicro, ASRock, and other companies make server boards for 1700, which give you features like ECC UDEM support, as well as IPMI and maybe faster networking like 10 gigabit built in, which might be worth looking into if you want server features with these CPUs. 
Also verify they have IGPs enabled because often these have IPMI for their VGA output. When it comes to using dedicated graphics, which would give the advantage of being able to use stuff like dual Xeon systems and large amounts of memory or other platforms like AMD systems, I'd probably have to go with the ARC GPUs. You can get these quite cheaply now. They have the best transcoding performance of the dedicated graphics I saw, fairly low power, and the drivers are quite good now. In Ubuntu, it was essentially plug and play. I didn't have to touch any additional drivers at all. Whereas this RTX card, I have to install the NVIDIA proprietary drivers to be able to use their encoding capabilities to its full extent. And while they are relatively decent in a lot of use cases, NVIDIA's drivers do sometimes cause more issues with Linux than the open source drivers you get with the Invi Intel cards. The only big time I'd really recommend one of these NVIDIA cards to someone for Plex is if you're trying to do HDR to SDR tone mapping, because in my test, it was the only way to do it on hardware. I feel like I'm doing something wrong because it wasn't working on here, but it showed usage on both of these cards, but just wouldn't use any less CPU and effectively didn't give me any more stream capabilities to use. I feel like this testing brings up more questions than answers, and I'm kind of willing to answer more of those questions if you have them below, if you want me to test more different cards or different workloads or use Jellyfin or other software, let me know in the comments below and be more than happy to do it. Also, let me know what you use for transcoding and how your experience is with it. I'm curious kind of what everyone else in the community is using for their transcoding capabilities and how they find it working for them. Thanks for watching this video, and hopefully these tests were either informative or interesting to you.